time for your next lesson in magic. Ready your wands. A lot of cadaver. Mr. Otter! What are you doing? Things can go wrong if you do them out of order. Are you alright? Very well. Do it right this time. Bombada! Much better. How is that? No, <laughs> uh, of all the games to request, it had to be like the third weakest in the Lego series. Huh? Huh? Uh. <sighs> Hello, Traveler's Tales. I saw you last night. It's not a fond memory. I suppose that's as appropriate a way as any other to start out this review, but... I suppose that's as an appropriate a way to start the review as any other, but... Welcome, one and all, to the next month of requests. So, this month, to begin things out, Holt member Stargazer requested we play... Lego Harry Potter, years one through four. I was excited when this was requested. I mean, it's a Lego game. It's been a long time since I've played one in this series. I hadn't yet realized that Bionicle Heroes would be uh, essentially a Lego shooter. And it'd been quite some time since I played this game. I'd forgotten. I want to stress from the outset that the game isn't Bad. On the surface, it's fairly enjoyable, but for what I expect out of a Traveler's Tales Lego game, it's bad. Like, really bad. They try to keep the core concept of what makes a Lego game, but they also make it horrible to play and boring to go through and collect. But I'm getting ahead of myself. After all, what's the story? Go read a book. Or watch the movie. All the LEGO game storylines are literally just their related movie, only expressed through mute LEGOs. There'll be a few new jokes and interactions based on the fact that LEGOs can't talk or because their bodies are so amusingly destructible, and those are always worth seeing. But if you've seen the original property, you know the story. If you don't know the original property, you will probably be quite confused about what on earth is going on, and any explanation I could give really wouldn't properly explain anything. Now it's on to the gameplay. LEGO games are known for having hidden secrets throughout the levels, which you will need to come back to in free play to find. Different types of characters have different abilities, and you'll need to find those mix of abilities to interact with the world. That's what makes the gameplay interesting, needing to spot the different types of secrets in different places. Most interactions can be spotted easily outside of spots that will need to be built but in many of the games, those spots will either glow to let you know you can interact with them, or will bounce up and down slightly to help you. All of that fun is completely absent in this game. Every character can do what every other character can do, with four real exceptions. Only Fang and Hermione can dig. Well, Crookshanks can dig, but you'll have to play Hermione to get Crookshanks. Hermione's the only one that can use bookshelves as well. Only Harry has an invisibility cloak, although some levels allow you to brew an invisibility potion, and only dark wizards can use dark magic. Every other interaction in the game is just a different spell. Everyone has more or less the same spell pool. Some characters will have some spells others don't. For instance, Harry has Patronus, but doesn't have Ridiculous. Ron is the opposite of that. On top of that, Everyone is everyone. In other LEGO games, you'll unlock other characters, up to hundreds of them. Sure, some will be a joke or a clone of another character. LEGO Star Wars 2 has eight versions of Luke Skywalker alone, but that is nothing, nothing on the 11 versions of Harry. And four of the Lukes were blaster users, four were Jedi. All 11 Harrys are literally the same character wearing a different outfit. 
Woo! But in this one, he'll wear pajamas! Another six versions of Hermione, another eight versions of Ron, all functionally identical in every way. Even once you go on to the other characters, though, it only gets worse. True, there's only one Professor McGonagall, two Dumbledores, yet there's actually no difference in what professors can do. Nor is there any difference between those three and almost any of the other professors. Even when there's a difference, it doesn't matter. Lupin can turn into a werewolf. Congrats, I'm still not sure what that does for you. And you want to talk useless characters? I hate to keep bringing up LEGO Star Wars, but yes, there were useless characters. Gonk Droid, PK Droid, Imperial Spy, but they were at least funny and unique. LEGO Harry Potter, Gryffindor, boy. Oh man, I'm just getting so excited to play as the generic Gryffindor boy that I still have to physically buy after I find the token in the level. It's not enough to find the hidden token, you need to buy the character in the store, adding even more tedium to collecting already meaningless characters. Once you have one Harry, one Hermione, and buy a Dark Magic user, it literally does not matter what other characters you buy or have, they'll just do everything that you already could. Then there's the issue of the spell wheel itself. Unless you have the specific spell on the wheel that will let you interact with the particular interactable object, you will never know the object can be interacted with. There are eight spells on the wheel, so you have a one in eight chance of actually having the right spell equipped. That's how math works. Some spells will also be required to interact with some objects, but will never glow. For example, certain objects can only be blown up by Reducto. Unless you attack everything in the room with Reducto, you will never know if it's one of those items. Some other objects simply won't react unless you have the exact right spell equipped and are standing in exactly the right spot. Some also require the moon to be in perfect alignment with the third star on the right of Orion's belt. Over and over, Myth and I got stuck trying to play the game, looked up the solution, and found out that it was either something we had already done, but somehow hadn't triggered to progress the game to go on, or it was an object we'd been trying to interact with using every spell on the wheel, standing in every spot around it, and somehow even when using the Wii Remote to directly point at the interactable object, it would not let us interact with it until it felt good and ready. So essentially, if you wanted to go through this game in free play to find everything, you would have to go over every step of the room, slowly facing every possible direction, and holding there for a few seconds to see if a glow popped up in each direction, with most of the spells on your wheel, one at a time. Or play with a walkthrough in hand, taking what little joy out of the game there was left. Then there's the hub world. All. Of. Hogwarts. Not to go into my Lake Lego Star Wars pot again, but... In Lego Star Wars, you go to the door for the next level, you go into the level, you play the level. In this game, you wander across Hogwarts, relying on a trail of ghostly studs to even have the vaguest idea where you're trying to go. You get stopped to hunt a room for 15 minutes in order to brew a potion so that you can go into another room where you can have a lesson that isn't even a level before you can go into a new room where you'll waste another 6 minutes on a puzzle involving that new power so that you can finally access the level. It's not fun, it's not whimsical, and if you wanted to have a level where you explored Hogwarts, great! That'd be awesome! That's not what this is. The castle is set up as a hub world where nothing you do actually matters, but it's a giant hub world that wastes your time. Is it the worst in the LEGO series? No, those are reserved for the games that came after the LEGO movie killed the soul and joy of the games. It's amazing to me how such a good movie created such a negative effect in the games by giving them an excuse not to try. But that will still be a discussion for a game when it becomes relevant. For now, this is not the worst LEGO game or the worst game. I still stand by what I said earlier, though I may have to change my tone as I discover more games down the line. But for the time being, I consider LEGO Harry Potter years 1 through 4 to be not a bad game, but still the third weakest of the LEGO games. Sorry, Stargazer. Hi. While not a truly bad game, LEGO Star Wars... LEGO Harry Potter... Oh, that's his 